ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Croatia. Okay, so uh, um, do you know how to say Croatia in Croatian? Hrvatska. So we are now here in Vukovar uh, and we're going to have a bus ride towards Osijek. And you can see here to the left, this is one um, well, landmark uh, from the war in 1991. This is the center of the town. Uh, to the left you also have uh, up the street some of the buildings that haven't been rebuilt. But many of the things so far um, look pretty all right. Um, it was kind of a long process because in the center here a lot of the buildings are from Baroque period. So they had to be done in exactly the same way as they were before. This town had before the war in 1991 around 45,000 inhabitants. Today you have almost 30,000 people. This town was uh, under the siege for almost uh, three months, so from uh, August till November. And during that period it was under heavy artillery attacks. Well, uh, in 1990 we had first free elections. And uh, parties that won here in, in Croatia and then also in Slovenia, also former Yugoslav Republic, uh, suggested some changes when it comes to the ruling of the country. Uh, but that wasn't accepted by the Central Committee of Communist Party. Well, uh, since Central Committee didn't accept uh, wants uh, from the parties that won over here, especially when it comes uh, to the ruling of the country. They suggested that we should become a democratic uh, country. Communist Party, of course, didn't want to let go. And we said that we will organize a referendum about seceding. And based on the results from the referendum, in June 1991, Slovenia and Croatia declared independence. And this is uh, when the war started. In Slovenia you had just around two weeks of war. Here in Croatia things lasted a little bit longer. Actually from summer 1991 until the arrival of UN in spring 1992. And during that period this eastern part of Croatia fell under Serb jurisdiction. Here in front of you is also one of the most representative buildings uh, from Vukovar. This is Elts Castle, E-L-T-Z. Uh, we call it castle, but this was more a summer villa of one German family that got this property um, during 18th century. And uh, they had vineyards in this area. Uh, this is also the buildings to your left hand side. Those used to be wine cellars. The building was pretty much uh, damaged in the bombings in 1991, but two years ago it was finally um, rebuilt and repaired by the support of European Union partly and also by our government and renovation cost 15 million euros. And in this street you also have here to the left, this is all a hospital here and you also have one little glassy part over here to the left this is the entrance uh, when it comes uh, to hospital here in Vukovar this is um, a place where probably the biggest tragedy happened uh, during the war in this part since uh, when the Yugoslav National Army entered the town it was supported by many paramilitary forces from Serbia 
um, 261 people from that hospital were executed. They were all buried uh, in one mass tomb nearby uh, this town and um, on every November 18th uh, this town has a memorial day. Uh, so actually what was problematic when the war started, uh, in Slovenia you had really short period of war because uh, they didn't share the border with Serbia like we did. Uh, land border with Serbia is for about half an hour of driving in the opposite direction and across River Danube we also have Serbia. And we also had a problem with Serb minority which didn't support the idea of Croatia's independence. Uh, you had around 11% of Serb population in our country uh, that didn't support uh, this idea of independence. They were all encouraged by the politicians uh, from Serbia that this is not going to be a good idea. So when Yugoslavia started to fall apart, also Yugoslav National Army started to fall apart. Uh, people were leaving it. Some parts, uh, some people stayed loyal to it, of course, but you had a lot of them who walked out of uh, um, one army that wasn't anymore um, representing one country. They just took out uh, the positions outside of the town and they were shooting this town with uh, bombshells and uh, also by airplanes for almost three months. During that period it was almost 90% destroyed. And uh, the town stayed under Serb jurisdiction until 1998. This part over here was peacefully reintegrated. A uh, whole eastern part of Croatia uh, was uh, reintegrated under UN supervision. This is also one of the rare successful missions of UN in the world. And uh, basically, after three months of negotiations, they lasted from 1995 until 1998, this eastern part of Croatia was reintegrated under Croatian jurisdiction. And this is when the reconstruction of the town starts. We got a lot of donations also from European Union, uh, also separate governments of European Union, and uh, also by our government. Uh, for example, you can see to the left-hand side one red brick house. You will see some of them still on the roads over here. Well, our government decided to support the families who chose to return in giving them material. So bricks, uh, tiles for roofs, um, windows, doors, so, and the company which was in charge for the reconstruction. So basically they just rough construction of their home. Since people had to start from scratch, that was a really significant kind of support for many of them and their only obligation was not to sell those houses for another 10 years. young people from this part of eastern Croatia go to work on the coast uh, during uh, season. Uh, the season on our coast uh, starts uh, in April and it ends usually at the end of September. We have one archaeological site uh, nearby. Uh, civilizations used to develop usually next to the big rivers and since River Danube is also very important uh, river for this part of Europe as well, one Neolithic culture also existed over here. It is a time around 3,000 3, to 2,300 before Christ. Uh, they were quite prosperous, uh, they knew how to work with metal, uh, they were building houses in a round shape and uh, one of the most famous artifacts of Croatia was also discovered in this location site. The location site is called Vucedol, V-U-C-E-D-O-L, 
and this artifact which looks like this was discovered in 1938 over there the original is kept in archaeological museum in zagreb in croatian capital and uh, archaeologists think that it was probably used as a ritual vessel does it remind you of something a shoe a bird true a dinosaur a bird yes it is a dove we call it uh, yes vuchetol dove uh, like the archaeological site where it was discovered and since dove represents peace it also became a symbol of this town over here so if you see it for example when you are in vukovar usually you have on some charts or information about the town you have a photography of this uh, object so this is what it is